Welcome back guys to Panama Reeves, my name is Daniel and this is the tank vlog. In today's video we're gonna see what happened to the tank in the past two weeks. I can not tell you quite a bit happened, but also stick around till the end of the video. I have a pretty special announcement. So what happened to the tank in the past two weeks? Well, the first week actually was pretty good. There's a new LFS in town. It was started by this pretty cool guy. He broke his tank down and made an LFS. All the corals you see here are from his tank and looking at them, it must have taken quite a bit of effort and willpower to break down a tank with these corals. Most of them are actually national, grown right here in the shores of Panama. But they look quite pretty, don't they? After going to his store, I went to this other guy. He actually brings corals from the States. This is not so easy. As you know, most corals are in the endangered list. And transporting them from country to country is not an easy solution. Even here where the permits are not as hard to come by as in places like Australia, it's quite difficult. Even if you get the right permits and the right paperwork, which costs quite a bit of money, they can still retain your corals and customs. And as you know, any delays in shipping coral can be deadly. So he's taking a big risk transporting corals from the states to here. Due to being a very small community, and their regulations in shipping corals internationally. The variety of coral here in Panama is pretty small. And whatever coral you see here, if it's not a national coral, it can be around 30 to 50% more expensive than in the States. And even some corals can be double the expense that in the States. So that's why my tank is not as good as, as some you see in the, in the internet. I'm actually quite jealous of you guys. You have such a variety. And you really should appreciate it. So, after going to the stores and acclimating the corals, I float them and I do a drip acclimation. I also like to dip them in Revive. I bought around 4 corals in these 2 weeks. The first two are these two hammers. The purple tip one and the one that's completely green would be the second one from your left. They are actually pretty, pretty cute. They both have two heads and in this tank I have been able to grow hammer coral quite easily so they should be growing with no problem. I also got this Gorgonian. This Gorgonian is actually a national Gorgonian. You can find it along the northern coast of Panama. So it's pretty cheap. It is photosynthetic, so it should work well where it's placed. I also bought these mushrooms. I have heard that in the States it's a bit more difficult to get Ricordia mushrooms, but all those are national, so one of the good things of living in Panama, I guess. And I bought this coral. This coral was actually a bit hard for us to identify. The owner of the coral he didn't really know what it was and me and a friend of mine we tried to identify it but it took us like three days to identify it. Finally we came up with it being a Cyphastria. Cyphastria really like low light and medium to high flow so right now it's in the bottom of the tank and in a place where it gets quite a bit of flow from the gyres. You might have seen when I was dipping the coral that I had a fish there. That fish sadly did not make it. It was a six line res. I acclimated it for around two hours. After that, because the lights were still on, I decided to put it in the tank, but inside a big, big net that I had to let it have like a barrier between him and the other fish. And the other fish came up to him, but they didn't try to attack him or anything. After releasing him into the tank with the lights off, I started to see the pseudochromis attacking him, but it was already pretty late. So I wasn't able to take him out of the tank or anything else. And these things happen. Most of the fish that I got have experienced some sort of aggression. And the next day they are all fine, they get into their hierarchy and it's all good. 
But with this guy, I don't know why, he just didn't wake up in the morning. I fished him out at around noon the next day, and he was already dead. The next week I decided to take things slow and not buy any more things, even though the LFS was packed. Mainly because even though the only fish I bought died, the corals still have some bio load and more than that they drain alkalinity and since I only dose cutwasser, I am having to start really looking into the alkalinity of the tank because I'm starting to grow a lot of coralline algae. And as you know, when coralline algae starts to take off, it drains alkalinity like no one else. But it paid off, I think. Almost all the corals are doing great. The Recordia mushrooms, they are fantastic. If you look at this guy, when I bought him, he was like a 50 cent coin. Now it looks like a silver dollar. He's huge. And I kind of like where I placed him. He's like a little cave. Also the Gorgonia is opened up and pretty happy. But what can you expect? Gorgonias are beast. Now to the hammers. As you saw, the purple tip hammer was actually really close to the green tip one and was even inside the flesh of the other one. So I decided to separate them a little bit. And the purple tip hammer is great now. It's even more expanded than before. However, the whole green one, he's not that happy. As you can see, he's a bit retracted. Probably when I was moving him, I might have damaged the flesh of the coral. And maybe now it's fighting some kind of bacterial infection or something. So what I'm gonna do is tomorrow when I have to do a water change, I will also dip that coral in some iodine solution to help it if it does have some bacterial infection. Why do I think it's some bacterial infection? Well, LPS usually are more susceptible to bacterial infections than parasites, especially euphilia. If they get damaged, they quite easily fall to bacterial infections. And now to the really fun part. As I told you guys in the first tank vlog, I was having some trouble feeding my acantophilia. As you know, meat corals, scolemia, acantophilia, and endophilia really like to get fed. Some people feed them around three times a week. I would want to feed it every day if I could, because it just loves it. So I figured out that if I feed homemade food, mainly shrimp and slices of fish, that the other fish really like it, but also that they take quite a bit to eat it, mainly because some slices of shrimp are too big for them. So they end up with the food in their mouth and they don't really like to peck at the food I feed my corals then. So I just bring quite a large piece to the acantophilia and look what happens. As you can see, meat corals really put up a show when it comes to feeding. They expand their feeding tentacles and they retract the mantle, looking like a flower when they feed. And also they can take really large pieces of food. This piece was almost like a dice, like a one centimeter cube. It's pretty big, but as you can see, it's gone. Okay, so we have come to the end of the video. Now the announcement I wanted to make was this. This is a very small channel and I'm really having trouble finding the subjects that I want to talk about. So in the comments down below, just write whatever topic you want me to talk about. And with every video I will make a lottery and I will pick out one of the comments at random and I will make a video about it. Let's hope you like that idea and let's hope you'd like this video. If you like it, please subscribe. I'll bring out a video in English pretty much every other day. So stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. If you're still here, I gotta say thank you. I know this video was a lot longer than usual and that my pronunciation is pretty bad. 
so it must have been quite hard to listen to me during this whole time. But I thank you a lot for your time, and I hope to see you in the next one.